Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There has been a clamour in recent times for an increased role for gas in the South African energy mix. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some developments in this area. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why is there an ongoing call for more gas in the energy mix and what have been the obstacles to introducing gas? Well, the call for more gas is because we really are an unbalanced energy mix at the moment. We're very coal heavy, got a little bit of nuclear, very little bit of gas. And we're starting to introduce more and more renewable energy into that mix. But gas is seen as a, an important uh, bridge, uh, especially in the, the world of bringing down emissions. So although it's a fossil fuel, it doesn't emit at the same levels as uh, coal does. And uh, also you can build these gas-fired power stations often quite a lot quicker than you can a mega nuclear or mega coal-fired power station and they deliver base load. The big uh, constraint to uh, a gas economy in South Africa is the lack of availability of domestic gas. So we have had gas in this economy, but most of that was mined offshore, uh, off Mossel Bay, uh, to convert that into liquid fuels or chemicals. And there we've had problems in maintaining gas production there, and therefore the, the Petrosa smelter, or Petrosa refinery down there, is producing way below its nameplate capacity. So we don't have, we're on flush with gas. But the world has changed. There's been this uh, shale gale in the US, and we've seen the energy prices coming down massively in the US. We're also looking at countries now that were gas importers, such as America, wanting to now export gas. So there's more gas uh, being found uh, outside of Africa, but also, very importantly, inside of Africa, particularly on the East Coast at the moment. There's massive, massive finds that have been found in, in Mozambique and Tanzania in the Rivuma Basin. And then we do have some gas coming through uh, from the southern Mozambique into uh, Sassel, uh, which uh, converts that again into liquid fuel, some electricity and chemicals. So the, the idea is really to try and diversify uh, the electricity mix away from coal, get gas into the economy to lower the emissions, but also provide baseload alternative and peaking alternative to, uh, to what we have at the moment. And the main constraint is that we don't have domestic gas. Through the electricity war room, it looks like there has been some progress on the supply side. Yes, and uh, the, the, the key, I think, decision here is, are we prepared to import gas in the form of liquefied natural gas, LNG? And if we're saying that is going to be the start of a gas economy and a, a building of a, a, a transition to a domestic gas mining industry. So start with imports, and then I think the view is eventually start exploiting the po potential deposits under the Karoo in the form of uh, unconventional gas, shale gas. It's controversial and it's some way off, but that's the view that we maybe should start getting gas there, uh, into the economy, start using it for power and other things, uh, either directly in, in plants or in uh, gas to power uh, power stations and then that demand base is there for when for instance uh, shale gas starts to be mined eventually and we'll have to build the infrastructure around that and the the decision that the war room's looking at is whether to build a LNG terminal now this has been on the cards for many years and there's been an increasing clamor for it as we've seen gas especially arising up in Mozambique because we also have some gas in Namibia that we know of in Kudu but as Mozambique's reserves have become more proven, there's a view that we should really look at tapping into that, either through electricity production up in the north, coming down through wires into South Africa or gas pipelines, or potentially terminals. Now, if we were to build a, a terminal, it's most likely that's going to be on the west coast, and it's most likely not going to be uh, tapping into that Mozambique fine just yet. But the idea is that there is this, uh, the world is, has got a lot more, there's a lot more abundance of gas and a lot more countries like Australia, like America are starting to export LNG. And the view is we can start converting, for instance, the, um, the two big uh, peaking power stations that operate on diesel that Eskom runs, uh, Ankerlich and Kharikwa, to gas by building a terminal, importing that gas through that terminal, possibly at Saldana Bay down to Kharikwa, down, uh, down to Atlantis, down to Kharikwa, so that we can have um, uh, those uh, burning much cheaper uh, of primary energy versus diesel. So that's, that's the view. Whether it will be in Saldana is still a matter for, uh, you know, for debate. Uh, um, Petros has done quite a lot of work in the Mossel Bay area, 
looked at two sites in that area. The seas were found to be far too rough for a floating terminal. And it will probably be, need to be a floating terminal initially because that would be the quickest uh, and cheapest to build. There's some debate as to whether that's the best route to go, but I think on the whole, I think the war room, and we heard from Sassel this, this week, that they are uh, part of that discussion. Um, they would like to be involved possibly as an equity participant, but mainly as an advisor. They're looking at, they know gas well, they know the technologies well, they know the, the, the world of gas, and potentially they could be a, a sort of a deal facilitator in this process. So they are, the war room is looking at gas, and it looks like the first step would be an LNG terminal to start uh, getting the gas into the economy. Is there any movement from government in seeking to procure gas to power capacity from private generators? That's, that's the other development. Now, we had these determinations a few years back from the then Energy Minister, Depot Peters, um, that we said we would try to get about 3,000 megawatts or 2,000 uh, megawatts plus into the economy um, based on gas. So now the people are, you know, have been looking at it and saying, but where is the gas? So we know we do have some domestic resources and some regional resources. There's also potential on the West Coast, quite advanced potential at, at Ubabesi, which would be a domestic gas source. And one of the fears is, of course, it's going to be a dollarization a bit of our energy mix, because at the moment it's based on domestic coal primarily, which is mined domestically, and uh, Eskom buys that in rands. So there is that fear. But the, if we are going to build a terminal, we could maybe scale it to a size where it's not just for Ankelig and Kharikwa or terminals, uh, if we do go that way, but also for, uh, for RPP, uh, independent power producer generation. So the, the, there is a going to be a request for information released by the RPP office that falls under the DOE and the National Treasury, and that should be released any day now. And that request for information will then inform the way the Department of Energy and National Treasury eventually issue a tender to look at, much like we've seen with the Renewable Energy Program, um, uh, power producers tapping into that, maybe that gas supply, that once that's a bit more visible, and then producing power and electricity, which can be produced, uh, as I say, uh, a lot of these plants can be produced, uh, developed quicker than, say, a coal-fired power station. So that would be the view um, that we should have a tender possibly by the end of the year going out for independent power producers to start bidding and making their case for um, building power stations around probably imported gas initially, maybe domestic, some domestic gas. And the, 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 the big question is, will the framework, the infrastructure framework be in place so that RPPs can build gas to, f uh, gas to power plants? And I think we still have to see some decisions at the war room, some decisions at government, and we've seen most crucially we need to have a sort of bankable feasibility study, all the EIAs out the way so that we can put shovels in the ground or whatever it requires to build a floating terminal so that we can have the infrastructures to start bringing this gas in. Because without that, I think uh, a gas to power tender from the RPP office is, is dead and we'll then be having to look at other alternatives um, in the form of other renewables or more coal base load because we have the coal base load tender also at the moment. So there are a lot of it's a more difficult area. It's, it's, not, it's not like the resource is available in abundance like we see with coal or with uh, solar or with wind. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of a different environment. But there does seem to be an intention and uh, a political intent to move towards a g gas into the energy mix. And now we're starting to see through the war room some developments. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.